How's it going, everyone? You all having a good morning? Does anyone have any questions about uh, the first part of or, or section 7.1 or the first part of 7.2? So today we're going to cover uh, the remainder of 7.2, and if we have time, we'll get into uh, 7.3. So last time we, we introduced the disk method. And just to recap, the disk method says that if we have a region bounded by a function f of x from a to b going around an axis. So basically this is our, our area and this shape is being revolved around the, the x-axis in this case. Uh, our formula for that is uh, integral, integral from a to b of pi r squared dx. And so in this case, the radius is the vertical distance from the axis to the function. And in this case, in this case r of x, or r is basically the same thing as f of x if it's going around the x-axis like it is here. So we end up with the volume formula of pi times the integral a to b of f of x in parentheses squared dx. And so that's our disk method. Now, in addition to the disk method, we also have what's called the washer method. So the washer method, th this scenario arises when, okay, we have a function forming one boundary. Maybe we have another function forming a second boundary. And then this again has A and B as our kind of left uh, limit and our right limit. And that encloses this figure. But, uh, this is going around, let me scoot that over, sorry. This is going around the x-axis as well. But because we have this empty space here, right in the middle, when this re object revolves around the axis, it's going to end up leaving kind of a hole in the middle of this object. So kind of a, a 3D view here, we would have, you know, whatever's on the outside, you know, that's kind of a strange curve, 
that's not great. Um, <laughs> but in the inside, there certainly will be a hole in the middle that goes all the way through. Okay. Um, so what happens is if we just integrate using the identical formula as the washer method, what's going to happen is we're going to get get the area from <coughs> excuse me from the axis up to the function f of x, and we would get that entire area, and so. That would also include this empty space that is in the middle. And we call it a washer method because the idea is that when we take a cross section, rather than looking like a disc where we take out a circular piece, we, we cut a piece off, and it's like just like a circle as we would see over here. In this instance, it would be like a, a washer, which is like a disc with a hole in the middle. That's our technical definition. <laughs> um, but uh, we want to be able to account for that empty space that is now no longer present in the 3D figure. And so it does add a little bit of a change to our formula, but it actually, I think, hope, or I think it changes in a meaningful way. Like we can understand where this comes from. Because the idea is that if we take this function and revolve it around this x-axis, okay, we can find when this total area is revolved around the axis. But if we take uh, the area inside from, or from 0 to g of x here, we can find that, take that area, revolve it around, and get that volume. And so we can find the volume that the the hole in the middle represents so we can subtract that from the other volume and get the resulting volume of the figure and so what the washer method really is is a repeated application of the disk method so we take a disk method for f of x and we take a, a disk method for g of x and we subtract the two so our washer method Our formula will be volume equals pi times the integral of, uh, and I'll call it capital R of x squared dx minus pi times the integral, and this is, this is from a to b, sorry, pi times the integral of little r of x parenthesis squared dx okay and so we have two different radii that we're considering now I'm calling them one of them capital R of X and the second one little r of X so capital R of X will be the radius from the axis to the furthest function so I'm going to call this capital R of X and then little r of X will be the radius from the axis of revolution to the closest function closest uh, boundary uh, so from here to the farthest one, that's r of x. From here to the closest one, little r of x. And so this is our formula for the washer method. And we could actually combine it into a single integral. I just wanted to demonstrate it's basically a disk method minus a disk method. Uh, but we can actually put that as r of x squared, or capital R of x squared minus little r of x squared. integrated and then multiplied by pi so either format there is fine now you'll have the formulas available whenever it comes time to take a test here on this material uh, the main thing we want to focus on is recognizing uh, 
when we need to use the disk method and when we need to use the washer method. Now, we said the washer method applies when we end up with a 3D object that has a hole in the middle. Now, the easiest way to determine if we have a hole is that the the figure that is revolving around the axis is not completely flush against the axis of revolution. So here, in our disk method, let me pull the image back down, in our disk method that we've been talking about already, this shaded region is completely connected to this axis of revolution that we're going around. There's no space between the shaded region and the axis, so it's going to make one solid figure as it rotates. And that's definitely not the case here in the washer method graph because we have the space between the axis and the closest function that in defines the shaded region. Because we have that space, that means that space is going to be revolved and create a hole in the resulting 3D figure. Okay. All right, so that's our washer method. Now, I wanted to look at, uh, and this is on page, page seven, no, this is the section 7.2. It's page 461. We'll look at number 14. Now in 14, we're given the functions y equals 2x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 2. And so first thing we want to do is identify where the shaded area is located. So y equals 2x squared is just our basic parabola, although with the extra factor of 2 means it's, it's stretched vertically a little bit. We have y equals 0, which is our horizontal axis, and x equals 2, which is a vertical line through x equals 2, and so that completely encloses this region. So we have an enclosed region here. This is the object or region that we will be revolving around the uh, axis or different axes that we are given in this question. Now, it's going to be relevant. Let's uh, let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Uh, if we plug in x equals two to the curve here, to the parabolic curve, two squared is four times two is eight. So that means we're going to have a coordinate of two comma eight right here. And that uh, gives us a little bit better idea because if we, anytime we revolve a, gra uh, a disk or washer method problem, anytime we go around a horizontal axis, we're going to use the x variables. That means our limits of integration are on the x axis, and we're integrating with respect to x, basically. So all of our functions and all of our variables are in terms of x. If we revolve around a vertical axis, that means, of course, it's going to flip and going to be with respect to y. And we'll use our limits of integration on the y-axis as an alternative in that case. So it just depends on which direction our object or is being rotated, uh, which uh, axis is being rotated about. And uh, that then tells us how we can proceed. So while we, we know that this curve is defined as y equals 2x squared, uh, we also know that y over 2 equals x squared. And so we solve that for x and say x is plus or minus the square root of y over 2. 
So if we need to use the, the y-axis, this part of the curve is x equals positive square root of y over 2, and this part of the curve is x equals negative square root of y over 2. Now, looking at these questions, it does look like they've given us two horizontal axes and two vertical, for vertical axes for question 14. So definitely we'll want to keep this in mind. We may need to, to use this formula instead of this formula. Now the reason we would use this formula as opposed to you know, positive instead of negative is positive means we're looking at the right branch of the parabola. Negative looks like uh, it would give us the left branch. Uh, but that's only if we need x as a function of y as opposed to y as a function of x. So we'll look at example A, or, or question A here. A, we want to revolve about the, the y-axis. With a vertical axis, so anytime we um, start a, uh, a problem like this where we're revolving uh, a function around, or, or, or sorry, a shaded region around an axis, we want to make sure that we recognize immediately is our axis horizontal or vertical, and then what does that tell us about which variables and, and you know which values do we need to use for this integration? Uh, and then we'll also identify which method is it, is it a disk or is it a washer. So because we're going around the y-axis, that means we have a vertical axis of revolution. So we're going to use y variables. which means x is equal to a function of y. And if we look at this axis of revolution and the shaded region that we're revolving around this axis, there is some empty space here between the axis and the shaded region. So we know there's gonna, you know, we're gonna have to use a washer method to be able to subtract the empty space from the figure that's revolved. So it will be a washer method. Okay. Now, as far as the boundaries, again, we have, here's our axis. So our radius or radii that we use for the washer method are measured from this axis of revolution. So to the far edge of our shaded region, this is R of Y, and to the nearest edge of our shaded region, this is little r of Y. Okay. So What's the distance then from our axis of revolution to this vertical side that is on the edge of the shaded area? How far away are these two lines from each other, basically? So we're dealing with two parallel lines right here. And if they're parallel lines, yeah, it's just two. That's a constant value of two in this case. So capital R of Y is just the value two. Now, 
for little r of y, it's the distance from our axis to this curved edge, which is based on our parabola that we drew earlier. And so the distance is just whatever this function is now. Okay. Now we said our function up here was y equals 2x squared. But again, we want to write it as a function of y. So we're going to use what we talked about up here, which is that y equals the positive square root of y over 2 is this part of this parabola. Now, it might seem problematic that we have a square root there, but remember we square each of these radii functions when we plug them into our washer method, so it actually helps it out quite a bit, and we're going to end up with just a normal expression after that. Okay. And that's really the most of the work right there is identifying, you know, um, is our axis horizontal or vertical? Which variables do we use? Which method do we use? And then identifying the radius or the radii in the case of the washer method, like we have here. Now, to set up this integral, we would say our volume pi. What would be our limits of integration if we're, if we're working on the y-axis as our axis of revolution, vertical axis? because we're working with our y values then we need our limits of integration on the y-axis so that would be from 0 to 8 okay now inside we wanted r of y capital r of y squared so that's 2 squared minus little r of y squared so square root of y over 2 squared dy Now, from this point, we can complete the integration. So 2 squared is 4. Square root squared cancels out the, uh, the radical, so it's just y over 2. And with then we complete our integration. That'll be 4y minus y squared over 4 integrated from 0 to 8. And so now we just plug in our limits at uh, y equals 8. 4 times 8 is 32. 8 squared is 64 divided by 4 is 16. If we plug in zero, it zeroes out both terms. And so we end up with basically 16 pi. And that'll be our, our volume of the revolved object. Which is basically going to be a cylinder on the outside, but then the middle it has like a, a hole kind of bored out. So coming to a kind of a point in the middle. Not really a point, but it has this parabolic shape inside that the hole represents. Okay.
So that's part A of that question. And again, the, the integration is not the difficult part. The main thing is being able to get to this point where we've correctly set up the integration with the two functions, in this case, for the radius, each radius, and then also our limits of integration, and making sure we choose the right variable to use inside of our functions. So part B on 14, we're going to repeat this same process, but now revolving the, this object or the shaded area around the x-axis instead. So, let's sketch our graph again. And so draw it a little bit distorted just so it fits a little bit nicer on the page. This time we're revolving around the x-axis. Now, the x-axis is horizontal, so are we going to use the x or the y variables in this case? X, yeah. And, and we can kind of see at this point it's pretty straightforward. If we went around the Y axis, we had the uh, Y variables. If it goes around the X axis, it has X variables. Where it gets a little trickier is when we have our axis of revolution is not right on either the X or the Y axis, then we have to pay a little bit more attention to horizontal versus vertical. Yeah, so we're going to use x variables. Okay, and here's the bigger question. Is there going to be a hole in this object when we ro rotate it? So the question is, is it a disk method or is it a washer method? disk, yeah. Because we look at this figure, it's completely connected to the axis of revolution right here. So when we revolve this around, it's going to be one solid object. There won't be any holes in it, at least in, in the sense that you know there's no hole or no gap between the shaded area and the axis that we revolve about. And that's why we would choose disk. So that means when we set up our, our you know, we, we use our function as a function of x. So this is our radius now. That's r of x. Okay, we only have one radius because it's a disk method. And, and we can see now that the, the distance from the axis to this curve is just the function itself. So we'll use r of x equal 2x squared. Okay. So, we set up our integration and now because we're going around the x-axis we're going to use the limits on the x-axis which is 0 to 2. Okay, so we have pi times our radius function squared dx 0 to 2. Okay, so we'll square 
2x squared, which means that'll be 4 and x to the fourth. And then we integrate that, which is uh, 4 x to the fifth over 5. We still have a pi on the outside. This integrated from 0 to 2. Now, we know the 0 is, if we plug in x equals 0, it just zeroes out the whole term in this case. We don't really need to worry about the 0. We're mainly focused on the 2 here. So 2 to the 5th is 32 times 4 is uh, 128, <coughs> excuse me, and then uh, 128 over 5 and then times pi. So we'll say our volume is 128 pi over 5 for this part of the problem. Now, in each of these cases, depending on whether the, the axis is horizontal or vertical, we know our limits of integration are going to be 0 to 2 or 0 to 8, depending on which way it goes. But then depending on where the axis is located, that changes how we find our different radii. So looking at 14c, Here we want to revolve about the line y equals 8. Now y equals 8 is up here. I'm going to draw it with the dotted line. And remember that's how high our graph goes. So Here's our axis of revolution. And so now, we haven't looked at an example like this where the axis is above the graph, but it's an opportunity now. First of all, if, since this is a horizontal axis, are we going to use the x or the y variables? X, yeah, horizontal, we use X, vertical, we use Y. So we're going to use X variables. As this shaded area is revolved around this axis, you know, we, we revolve that area around the axis, uh, is it going to create a hole in the middle? So the question is, is it a disk or washer method now? Washer, right. Because we have this space in between the actual shaded area and the axis of revolution, all of this space is going to be revolved around there if we just go from here to here. Um, and so we need to subtract that space out using the washer method. So we know we have a washer method. Mm -hmm. Now Here's where it's a little more difficult because we have to figure out what are what are the radii that we use for this washer method because we have to have two different radii. One radius goes from the axis of revolution to the farthest side of the shaded figure. Okay. Now from our axis to the farthest side, 
what is that vertical distance? How do we measure that as a formula, R of Y? Again, our axis is just parallel to the opposite edge of the shaded region. So it's actually just a constant value between them. Because from here to here is the same distance as here to here, is the same distance from here to here. And that distance is, well, the distance here to here. It's eight units away. Okay. Now, little r of y goes from this axis of revolution to this innermost curve that is closest to the axis of revolution. And so from here, if we have from, from this axis to this curve, it's again the same way that we think about back in section 7.1 where we said that we found the area between two curves by subtracting the two functions and then throwing that into our integral. If we have uh, two functions that we want the distance between, then we take the top function minus the bottom function. Our top function is simply eight, y equals eight. Our bottom function here, this curve, is y equals two x squared. So r of y is eight minus two x squared. This one's probably the most difficult, I think, for uh, students to see. Because we have this strange axis of revolution, it's no longer right on the x or the y axis. So it, because of that, we are gonna have to shift some things around. And, and essentially it gives us, okay, we can see that from this horizontal line to this horizontal line, it's a constant distance of eight. That one, I think, makes a lot of sense, or I hope it makes a lot of sense. But for the inner radius, the shorter radius, from the axis to the closest edge, closest edge of the shaded region, it's just the top function minus the bottom function, which is 8 minus the 2x squared that forms that curve. Now again, this right here, these are the most important steps in the problem because if we don't correctly identify capital R of Y, little r of Y, then everything else is going to be wrong that follows, basically. We could do good work, but we won't have a right answer um, at the end of the problem. So. so now we set up V equals pi integral zero and again because we're working with our x variables we're going to use x equals zero to x equals two as our limits of integration and then we'll take uh, capital R of y squared minus little r of y squared dy Okay. I'm not going to complete that integration because we're just working with uh, polynomials, so it's pretty easy to integrate. Um, so I think you understand it from there. The main thing we want to be certain of is that we understand where capital R of Y, little r of Y came from, and making sure we get the whole thing set up properly.
in our volume formula because that's going to be at least half the problem right there if not two-thirds of the problem you know are there any questions on that one Right, uh, and again, going back to you know the, the the original details of the problem, this is what we were given at the outset. We were given these three functions, and we determined it defined this shaded area. And so the question is, you know, if we are using y equals a function of x, then this is the formula that we use for this curve, but if we need x equal to a function of y, we have to solve for x, and we found the other two expressions for that curve. Because it's a parabola, that means it's a function in terms of x. It's not a function in terms of y, because if we draw a horizontal line, it fails the horizontal line test. So instead, for, for y variables, we actually focus on this part of the function, which is part of our, our the boundary of our shaded area that we found and so we need the positive square root we don't even need the negative square root because this branch of the problem is not used so. yes because we have a horizontal line that we're taking that whole shaded area and revolving it around that anytime we have horizontal we'll use a disk or washer method in this case, because we end up having a hole in the middle, we use a washer method. Okay, so everything that we're saying so far should be consistent. Horizontal axis, x limits on the axis, x variables, you know, washer or disk, whichever one it is from there. Vertical axis, then we use our y axis, y variables, uh, y limits. And so on. The hardest part about this is in the next section we look at the shell method where those ideas are basically switched. But let's not worry about that quite yet. We still have one more part to this question, part D, uh, which revolves us around the line x equals 2. So we draw a region. Here's our, our graph. Now x equals 2 is actually a vertical line through 2 on the x-axis. So this time we're going around this line through the right edge of our shaded area. So does that make it a disk? or a washer in this case. And which variables are we going to use? 
disc, right? The shaded area is completely connected to the axis of revolution and we would use y variables right because now we have a vertical axis So there's our radius, we know it's going to be a function of y, and it goes between or, or from the axis of revolution to the farthest side of the shaded region, which is now this curve again. Now, in this case, we just want this horizontal distance. So because we want the distance between two functions, because we have x equals 2, And we have x equals square root of y over 2 as our function here. Then we take the right minus left in this case. This one looks a little more strange than the others. When we find this radius function, this is probably the most involved our radius function has been. Um, but we look at it, so we know from this line, x equals 2, to the y-axis, that's a distance of 2 units. But we don't go all the way to the y-axis, we go to this curve. So the distance is actually less than 2 overall, most of the time. It's actually equal to 2 right here at the edge, but then it gets smaller and smaller the further we go. And so it's going to subtract this curve, whatever the function value is, at the, each specific height. So as y increases, then this value will decrease. So we set up our volume formula, pi. We're going from 0 to 8. So again, vertical axis, we use our limits of integration on the y-axis. And then we just take our, our radius function and square it. What, uh, are, are there any questions here before we continue? Now, this particular integral is a little bit more difficult than the previous three because we have the square root there. When we square both, you know, square this expression here because we have like a binomial squared, we know we're going to have to foil this times itself, or we, we know there's a pattern that we can use to, to, to follow that. Um, setting up that integration though. 2 squared is, is 4, 
2 times 2 is 4 times square root of y over 2. Subtract it. That's our middle term. Plus, and then y over 2 when we square this last part. 